Alright, so it's super tight in there, but I was able to get this drill right here and make a small hole in the seal. Now what I did, I put a screw on it, just a Phillips screw, and I'm going to use locking pliers to pry the seal out. So the screw is into the seal, and I have this needle nose locking pliers, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to use fast movements to pry it like that. Just like that. After you remove the seal, clean the surface with a clean towel. I removed the woodroof key so I wouldn't lose it. You might want to do the same thing. And then you can put it back on when you're ready to install the camshaft sprocket. Before you install the new seal, compare it to the old one. Make sure it's the same diameter. Inside and out. So when you're ready to install your new seal, coat the inner lip with petroleum jelly or at least new engine oil so it doesn't go on dry. This part, the other part, needs to be dry. And use a large socket that fits flush with the outside to install it. So here's something that you're probably going to run into. If I did, you probably will. Space is super tight in there and trying to tap it with the socket was awful hard. So. I have this crankshaft socket that is pretty heavy and I was able to start the seal just by using it by itself without any hammer but then it got to the point that it wasn't moving anymore so what I have as you can tell in there I found a piece of bolts on top of a strut and I have it right there as you can tell with a couple washers and I'm just going to use a camshaft bolt to finish putting it on just like that so like I said if I run into this because this thing is so tight it's super possible that you're gonna run into it so just another idea if you're struggling trying to get the darn seal in there and it doesn't want to go in something you can do too I'm just gonna finish putting it in and no need to film the whole thing so now that the new camshaft seal has been installed, it's time to remove the defective sensor. Remove this bolt right here. And there's going to be another bolt with an Allen head right over here. There's no need to remove the entire heat shield because there's another nut holding it down at the bottom. You'll be able to just slide it out a little bit and then pull the sensor out. Once you have your old sensor removed, just compare it to the new one, make sure it's the same. You never know, especially if you bought an aftermarket one. And then when you sell the new one, this is the guiding part right there. So that way you can guide it in and it won't fall. And then you can just put the bolt on and slide the heat shield over it, put the other bolt on, make sure it's tight. And after you install the sensor, install the camshaft sprocket back on. And then when you're installing it, make sure that when you're holding it, you don't damage the wheel, just like we discussed before. And the torque specs for the bolt is 59 foot-pounds. Finding a leak in camshaft seal was not something I was expecting and that just made this job a lot longer as you can tell. All I was supposed to do was remove a defective cam sensor and install a new one. Well, since this is getting to be too long, I'm going to link this video to another one we did on a similar engine. It was a Jetta but it's a 2 liter, so same thing. And on that video we explained how to do the entire timing belt kit. That way if you have doubts or concerns about finishing this job, I don't want to just leave you hanging. Okay, so I'll do that for you. I'll link it. But I'm just going to have to end this one right here so it doesn't drag forever and I can finish this car. Alright, so real quick. Here's the beetle running. After the sensor was replaced. And here's the old sensor that was not letting this car run properly. But there it is. And then we'll keep repairing all the other issues as we go. We'll keep you posted. Thanks again for watching. If you made it this far. Here's another super cool thing. Now that the beetle moves on its own. I have this part of my shop free now. And like I said. We'll be posting you on more repairs with the beetle. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.